Hello everybody, John here, and today onto the garage, we're gonna fit a pollen filter to blue, the XJL X358 diesel. Here it is, da-da. And again, a bit that people tend to neglect because not essential, but if it's wrong, it can be stinky. And if it's not doing its job and you suffer from allergies and hay fever, obviously sneezy times to come, and it's just nice to have your car right because these aren't expensive. Blue is really starting to rack up the miles now and it won't be too long before I'm able to do one of my 10,000 mile reviews with her. I'm starting to learn all her foibles and the things I love and the things I really don't like about this car. So uh, we'll be sharing that soon along as we have a proper review of the interior which I know I've not really shared up till now but she's getting better and better with all the servicing and repairs I'm doing so let's see how easy it is to fit this pollen filter start by popping the bonnet and then we're going to move around to the left hand side of the car on my right hand drive UK spec vehicle where we're going to do the pollen filter change those of you who are regular viewers of the channel, and particularly those who are fans of the XK8, XKR, there's Purdy, mine, will know we've already done this uh, swap on an XK8, XKR. And on one of those, it's a real pain. You've got to remove the scuttle panel, and you've also got to remove the wiper arms, and the wiper arms are often seized on, you have to make yourself a little tool, and then when you get in there, half of them, probably a lot more than half of them, don't even have a pollen filter or the facility to fit one because they're not a common fitment on that vehicle. On this vehicle, it's kind of the opposite. The XJ, luxury and all that, you know, practically all of them are equipped with a pollen filter and it's relatively easy. In the X350, X358, the pollen filter sits below this grill in the scuttle panel. So you're going to go to these two little uh, access flaps on the scuttle here. And like we've discussed a few times on the blue videos, my car has been looked after until quite recently and then I feel rather abused. And this is another example. This flap where that little chip is should have a peg in it. And another little peg just there. And those little pegs should go into the holes there and there. So but basically this thing kind of hooks in at the front and then the little clips hold it down at the back. But through general abuse, people not open it correctly, maybe even dealers who don't care, who knows, um, it's kind of been torn off. The blue flap, which covers up the washer bottleneck, should actually be hinged off the black item I've already removed and so come off with it. But again, abuse, been torn off, so I need either a new flap or to make some repairs to these panels. Unlike in the XK8, as soon as you remove those panels, you've got really good line of sight to the filter. And straight away you can see the amount of debris that's sitting against the dirty side of the filter. At least it is on the dirty side. Um, but to release the filter, it looks like, oh, we've got another disaster of a job. You're going to have to remove the scuttle panel because it's underneath the um, washer bottle. So this is going to be terrible. But no, this one's actually been thought out. All you need to do is get hold of the washer bottle neck just here and give it a firm tug over towards the center of the car and that seals your no-ring and a couple of snap connectors into a socket so well thought out and just give you a quick view of where it goes into there you go pushes into there so all we need to do now is literally just flick the front of the frame open by pulling on that and the filter itself can just be pulled back and once it's out of its holder you just 
pull up gently, maneuvering it to get it out of the hole. How easy is that? Brilliant. As you can see, there's an awful lot of debris down there, and I don't want it getting into the uh, heater system. So we're going to give it a quick hoovering out. And before the uh, internet gangs up on me, yes, I do know that uh, hoover is an eponymous word. Doesn't stop me using it. Uh, my machine is a Vax, which um, I'm not over keen on, if I'm honest. I miss my old Dyson. But good enough to lift out all the leaves and debris. So I'm using an OE standard pollen filter. Mine's a Delphi, it was supplied by British Parts. Uh, there's the part numbers, etc. for you. It has uh, some little paper flaps on two long edges. And on the shorter edges, it has these clip-on plastic um, bits with a little rubberized element to help seal it up. Um, it's quite soft, quite delicate. Be very easy to damage, so be careful when fitting it. But fitting it is very straightforward. Just drop it down into position, making sure the airflow is correct, i.e. from the front of the car to the interior, following the arrows. And it is just a fraction taller than the aperture it's going in. So you need to tease it down to get it underneath the lip, but don't press too hard because you just collapse the whole thing and then it turns into a bit of a screwed up mess. So just tease it in one end to the other and then you got a really nice snug fit in the hole. The frame, which is just hooked on at the bottom in a sort of hinge form, just snaps back at the top. Just give it a little firm push. Make sure you hear the click. There we go. And you've got a nice neat job. And you should be drawing in clean filtered air into the interior, which keeps down on dirt and dust, stops you sneezing, and means you're not breathing in stinky leaf air. Don't forget, put your filler neck back, just give it a nice firm push back into the hole, and make sure that's nice and secure. On mine, I've just unfortunately got to rest the various panel covers into place because abuse. And that's something I'll have to address, either replace or repair, because they will rattle. And um, in a quiet car like this, eventually that'll start to irritate me. The bonnet, as you can see, the seal mark on the blue element does hold them down to a degree. So it's not urgent, but I will have to address it. Talking of addressing things, I'm going to have to sort out the nuts that hold on the struts. Uh, they... Everything that's steel on an aluminium car seems to rust twice as quick. But it's probably more a case of it just stands out like a sore thumb. So uh, I'll have to swap those. So here is the filter that we've just taken out. And as you can plainly see, this has not been changed every 12 months. So another example of a bit of neglect, bad mechanic, bad dealer, owner who didn't care, all of the above, who can say. Um, we did this change on uh, the XK8 as previously described and that prompted an awful lot of really interesting discussion online in that, yeah, so, so few people outside the UK seem to have seen these uh, fitted. The States particularly um, seems to be quite a rare fitment on an XK8 and that in turn prompted a lot of discussion about, well, how much pollen must you get in the UK that most of your cars have these things fitted? And of course, the reality is that it's not all pollen. <laughs> There's all sorts of things trapped in here. So my car lives in Lincolnshire. Prior to me owning it, it also lived in Lincolnshire for quite a while. So I would say that this filter is going to be representative of a car in the UK in a rural environment outside of a city. So what we're going to do is try to empty it out just for the interest. Hardly laboratory circumstances I know, but I'm just going to put the, the filter inside a Ziploc plastic bag, leave a bit of air space in there and give it a good rattle 
and see what crops out. So dirty side at the bottom, give it a good few thumps onto the worktop and agitate it, see if we can loosen some of the debris up using this method. That's the little clap on, clip on, um, plastic edge just fallen off because I grabbed it. These are reasonably delicate, there is no actual um, frame as such to them, it is just paper. So, if we get it back out of its little plastic bag, we can have a little look at the sorts of things that are in it. An awful lot of the debris is actually in the fibres, so it ain't, it ain't dropping out. But this is what was loose but hadn't already fallen off when I took it out of the airbox. And there's some reasonably large elements that, again, would have gone straight into the interior in the absence of this. Little uh, brownish things that look like aphids are actually seeds. Um, an awful lot of grit and dirt and organic matter fibrous stuff, uh, bits of grass and other things that have basically blown off fields and you can still pick away at this and pull out loads and loads more debris. And again purely for my own interest in quarry mines and all that uh, I decided to cut up some of the filter just to see what the filter material looked like after use in the vehicle as a pollen filter for over 12 months that's all i'm going to say it's also quite interesting even though you know i'm an engineer i know how much is there it is interesting to see physically the amount of filter paper that is used in one of these things the surface area that is used it is uh, quite remarkable so quick chop chop with the scissors And then make ourselves a little bit of space. And this is less than a third of the filter. But on the dirty side, you can clearly see the amount of debris that's now stuck in the fibres, contrasting nicely with the white parts. So it's the tips that have been closest to the outside that have gathered quite a lot of the the staining that it deep down in the grooves has stayed relatively clean but that's collected the bigger bits that have fallen out when we've been uh, tapping the filter so yeah all of this would have been staining up your interior if the filter hadn't been there so back inside blue now and we'll just put the ignition on and turn the air Oops, radio off before the YouTube police get us. And we'll put the fan on max if I can remember where that's done. Yep, on max. And we'll put it on face, which tends to be the least restrictive of the routes. basically blow through the system so but I uh, open the doors now and just let it push anything that was in the ducts out so we're back to a nice clean interior system some people like to Work a little bit of air freshener into the intake side of their pollen filter. Not a bad idea, I don't think it will do any harm as long as you don't drive it immediately with um, a wet filter because obviously that's going to make the uh, bits and pieces stick to it even more and maybe clog it up. As long as it dries out, then uh, why not? Let's just turn the fans back off. Turn off the fans. There we go. Crikey. I'm a bit bleached out. Let's do something with sun visor. 
Ah, that's better. So, very quick how-to. So if you've got an X358, X350, X300, I think is different. Um, but I would imagine the location is quite similar. Um, and you want to change your pollen filter, that's how to do it. It's really easy to do. So uh, why not have a crack at it? If you want to do that on the XK8, we do have a video on it. It's an entirely different prospect, set aside half a day. <laughs> um, so thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Looking forward to your comments. And as I said, as the miles start to rack up on blue, the XJL, I'm getting closer and closer to being able to do a genuine 10,000 mile review for you in which I'll give you a proper walkthrough of all its sort of quirks and features to quote Doug Munro and also my genuine absolutely honest opinion on its highs and lows the advantages and disadvantages of this car um, what irritates and what delights because those of you who watch my videos know I'm very straightforward and very honest I'm polite but I am honest. <laughs> so, see you soon, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.